Hello and welcome to another episode of ARM Template Masterclass. One benefit of ARM Templates or any infrastructure as code tool is that what we're creating is code. And so we can treat it like code and we can start making use of a number of different tools and processes, some of which developers have been using for many, many years now. In today's episode and the next probably three or four episodes, we're going to be taking a look at utilizing developer tools for dealing with ARM templates. So this week we're going to have a look at version control and then we're going to move on next week to testing and there's probably going to be a couple of episodes on this because it's a fairly complex topic and then after that we're going to have a look at using pipelines and automation to deploy your templates. Now these are all tools that developers have been using for a long time but if you're coming from the IT pro side of things with creating ARM templates these are all possibly going to be pretty new to you, pretty foreign and possibly pretty scary. So in these next few videos, we're going to have a look at how you utilize those and hopefully make it easier for you to make a start on using these tools. I'd also encourage you, if you work with developers, why not have a chat with them about how they use these tools? You might have already have a company process for doing version control or testing, um, and maybe you can implement the same thing with your ARM templates. It might seem fairly daunting to start with, but most of these processes are fairly simple, can be broken down into fairly small steps, and we'll get going with them in no time. So on to today's topic of version control. You've probably heard of version control. There are various different solutions around there for things. You might have heard of Git, uh, Subversion, TFS. These are all tools you can use to version control code or pretty much any file to some extent. And so I guess the first question is why would you want to use version control with your ARM templates? And we've got a few reasons on this slide here. The first one and probably the biggest driver for most people is collaboration. If you're writing an ARM template and it's just you creating the template, then you're the only one trying to access it. You can store it locally on your machine, it doesn't cause any problems. But as soon as you start getting more than one person wanting to work on your ARM templates, or even just to get a copy of your ARM templates, never mind editing them, um, having them stored on your machine is a problem. Now, yes, you could put them on a file share or something like OneDrive or SharePoint or so on, um, but even that is a, is a rudimentary version control system. But if you use a proper development version control system, we get a few other benefits. But one of the key ones is collaboration. How do you get multiple people working on files at the same time? And so it's not just about sharing those files, but actually dealing with multiple people using them at the same time. If you've got one ARM template that two people are editing, how do you resolve their changes together to make sure that you know, one person isn't overwriting the others? How do you deal with merge conflicts? Those sort of things. And so a version control system can help you by allowing you to store those files centrally, but also provide a way to merge changes from multiple different people and so on. Alongside that, it's also going to give you a version history and the ability to compare between versions. So now not only can multiple people edit your files, but you can also look at what changes they've made, compare different versions to see what the difference is, um, and it makes it much easier to look at the history of a template and see what's changed. And if you don't like those changes, what a version control system will also give you is the ability to roll back those changes. So to restore back to a previous version. Because it's tracking the history and it's tracking every single change, you can, you can roll back and say, I want to go back to this specific version. And so that's invaluable for where somebody might have made a mistake. Somebody might have accidentally changed some things that you want to roll back. Um, version control gives you all these abilities. Another benefit of version control is that it gets the files off your laptop. And it's now stored in what is hopefully, depending on what provider you use, a much more resilient storage location. And this hopefully is backed up and should give you a much more resilient system for hosting your files rather than the danger of your laptop getting broken or leaving it on the bus or so on. Finally, we move on to the, the next videos when we talk about testing and um, pipelines. Most of these things are going to be run in some sort of automation account, some sort of build tool or something like that. These tools need to be able to access your ARM templates, to be able to run the testing or to run the release pipeline and so on. Again, if they're on your laptop, that's going to be a problem. And so by moving them into a version control system, we have a central location where all those tools can access it. And oftentimes, if you're using a CI/CD tool like Azure DevOps, Jenkins, GitHub, um, a lot of these things will actually have integrations between the source control system and the pipeline system. So it can even handle things like authentication for you. So there's a benefit to having that available for the tooling that we're going to talk about in the next few videos to be able to access. So all in all, version control gives you a number of benefits. And really one of the key things there is getting those files off your local machine into somewhere that's accessible by 
by your teammates that's resilient, that's backed up. And it's really one of the things I encourage people to do as their first step into sort of developer tooling is to just use version control. It's not a massive leap forward from what you were doing today. It's a slight new process when you make changes to make sure you check them in. But it's a fairly simple thing to integrate into your workflow and it brings so many benefits. We're going to have a look now at how to set up and use Git with ARM templates. There's a couple of prerequisites here if you want to follow along with what you're doing. So we're going to be using GitHub as the version control provider. You don't have to use GitHub. There are many, many providers out there. You can use whichever one you choose. But for the example, we're going to be using GitHub. If you want to follow along, you can sign up for a free GitHub account and you can do exactly that. The other thing we're going to need is the Git CLI to do some basic operations with Git. Now, there are many different Git tools you can use, um, GUI-based ones, command line-based ones. You're free to use any of those you want. That, that's absolutely fine. But for the basics that we're going to do here, we're doing a very minimal amount of work at the command line. We're just going to use the CLI, and then we're going to drop into Visual Studio Code to do the rest and use that as a Git tool. But any Git tool will work. In addition, if you're going to be using GitHub like we are, I'd also recommend installing the GitHub desktop client. This will make authentication to GitHub from the CLI and VS Code much easier um, as it will just give you a nice authentication window to use. You can also use it as an actual Git client as well if you want to. Finally, I don't have time in this video to do a complete uh, training on Git. So if you want to learn more about Git beyond what we talk about in this video, I would strongly recommend this video by Scott Hanselman where he gives a half hour 101 intro into Git and how you can use that. It's a great place to start if you've never used Git before and you want to figure out how it works. So let's have a look at using it. Okay, so here we are in GitHub and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a repository to store our code. So once you've got an account and you've logged in, you can go over on the left to the repositories and go to new. We need to give the repository a name, so you can call that whatever you like. You can give it a description if you want, and then you can choose whether this is public or private. GitHub now offer both public and private repos for free, because you can choose either. Um, if you want to lock it down so no one else but your, you and your team can get to, you can make that private. We're going to leave it public um, so that anyone can see what we've done. You also have some options here to initialize the repository with a readme file and so on. Now, I'm making an assumption here that you're, if you've already got ARM templates, you're going to want to set them up in this repo. So to make your life easier, if you're, already, if you're looking to import existing ARM templates, don't tick any of these. Don't initialize the repository. Leave it uninitialized. It will make importing your code easier. Now, it's entirely possible to import your code into an initialized repo if you've already done that. Um, but if you're coming to a new one, leave it unticked. It'll make life a little bit easier in the next step. So we'll go ahead and create that repository. Okay, the repository is created, and you can see here that it actually gives you some instructions on how to use this repository. We want to push existing code into this. So there's a section here about how to do this. But before that, we need to do some local work. So we're at the command line now, and I'm in a folder where I've got a couple of ARM templates. First thing we need to do is initialize this folder as a Git repo. So Git's a distributed version control system, which means you actually set up the version control on your machine. You commit changes locally, and they're stored in the version control locally. And then at some point, you push those up to the server, in this case, GitHub, to store those centrally. So the first thing we have to do is initialize this to be a Git repo with a very simple command called git init. And this is... All this really does is add a folder called .git in the folder. So if we look at the content of that folder, and we can see there we've got a .git folder. That's where all the git information is stored locally, and that's what init did. Now that we've initialized our git repo, we need to add the existing content into that repo and commit it so it's ready to be pushed to the remote server. So from the command line, we can again run git add dot the dot just signifies everything, so we want to add everything that's in this folder to the git repo. So I'll add that. And then we need to commit that. And so we'll run the git commit command with a dash m flag, which allows us to add a message. So we'll just type in the initial commit. And then press enter, and that will commit that to the repo. 
So now we've got that set up locally, we need to attach that to the one we have on the server to make sure that we can sync between the two. For this, we're going to use the commands we had over on GitHub. So those, those three lines about pushing an existing repository from the command line. So if we have a look at that, there are three commands to run. The first one is add an origin. This basically says this local Git repo is tied to this remote repo on GitHub. So that's what that does. It adds an origin for it to send data to. The next line, we set the branch to the master branch. That's the only one available on our repo. I'm not going to cover branches here, but if you want to know more about that, you can look online. And then the last step there is to use git push to push the content that's in the local repo up to the GitHub repo. And we will now see if we go back to the code page that our code has now been added to GitHub and it's available on the server. And so that's the system initialized and the data pushed. And if you want it to be, that's probably the last time you'll need to use the Git CLI. So what we do now is we open up Visual Studio Code. We'll open that folder. And all we'll do is we'll just make a quick change to this file. And save that. And now we're going to use the Git facilities in Visual Code to actually deal with that. So because you've saved that change, you'll notice on the left that actually the Git section has got a highlight on it because it's noticed you made a change that you need to commit. So if we click on that, and it will show us the file that's been changed, and you can actually click on the file and you can see the changes that you've made. Now we're happy with that, we're going to go ahead and commit it. So on the left in the Git section, we need to add a commit message to explain what we've done. So we'll type that in, and then we'll press commit. And that's committed the file, but that's committed it locally. So at the moment that change only exists on our local machine. What we need to do now is push that up to the remote server so that it's stored on there. So we'll go into the menu on the right here, and we'll click push. And this will push the change up to the server. And if we go have a quick look back on GitHub, if we have a look at our code, and we can see the commits listed on the left, so we've got this to commits option. If we click on that, you can see the changes and we can even now go have a look in the particular change and we can see the changes we made to that file. So all that history is available to us and we can use that to review these things and so on. Now back in VS Code, the other thing that's probably worth knowing about is what to do if somebody else has made a change. So all the changes I've made are stored locally, but if somebody else makes a change on the file and they push that up to GitHub, then obviously it's not in my local store. And so it won't be reflected here until I update my repo with their changes. And so again, we can go into the Git menu. And in here, there is a pull command. We can click on that. And that will pull down any changes that somebody else has made and merge them into our code. The other option you have in the menu here, as well as pull and push, is sync. And sync does both of those things. It does a pull and a push. So if you just want to synchronize between your local copy and the server, you don't have to do a pull then a push. You can just do sync and it will do that for you. There's a whole load of other Git functionality that can be useful to you in this things, things like pull requests, rollbacks, and so on. We don't really have time to cover those today. As I say, if you want to get more knowledge on how to use Git, then you can look online, look at the, some of the tutorials, particularly the, the Scott Hansible one I minute mentioned. But to be honest, to just get started, to get your code into Git and get it usable by your team, having enough knowledge to initialize the repo, push some code up to GitHub and pull it down again, should be enough to get you started. And that's how you can use version control, and in particular Git, to version control your ARM template. As always, if you've got any questions, stick them in the chat below the video, I'll be happy to answer them. Next week, we'll move on to the next topic in the developer tool series, where we're going to look at how you can test ARM templates. And this is going to be part one of a multi-part set, because there's quite a lot to discuss around testing. So hopefully I'll see you then. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.